is up, guys? Welcome back to another pottery video. I'm John the Potter, and I am so excited for this video today. We are talking about marbling. The marbling of clay. So this is a video I've been thinking about doing for so long. It's quickly become one of my favorite techniques. Here are just a few uh, of the marbling technique. You can do so much different stuff with this technique from color, different colors to carving it out to just letting the plain clay to drips to putting custom logos on the marbled. So yeah, I'm super excited. Basically what you are doing, there's a couple different ways to do it. You can use colored clay. So you can like mix white clay with darker clay and smash it together and then throw it. Or you can use the same clay and then you can use something to color it. So like for these ones, I use red iron oxide in B clay from Continental Clay. And then in this one, we used a blue and green mason stain mixed with B clay. And then like this one is just a buff stoneware mixed with the B clay. Sometimes different clays have different shrinkage rates. And so you wouldn't want to smash two clays together that have different shrinkage rates because then it'll crack. Most of the time I do this, I would just use the same clay uh, and then add colors to it instead of using two different types of clay. We're probably just gonna use the red iron oxide, but if you use mason stain, it's the same concept. So we take our clay, we're gonna wedge into it a bunch of the red iron oxide, and then we'll take different uh, levels of how much color there is and then smash them together in like three or four different ways. I'm gonna show you how. It probably sounds super confusing if you've never heard or done this before but there's some great videos out there. Uh, there are potters that do things really exact, so they'll measure out, you know, we want like 2% or 5% colorant with the clay. I don't do that, I just make it like, this is darker than this, which is darker than this. And so, you know what, that's enough talking. Let's just get into it, huh? This method is actually pretty simple. It's not that hard if you are feeling really comfortable with throwing. The preparation of the clay is what takes the most time. Let's do it! This, is red iron oxide. And one of the reasons why I love red iron oxide is it's really inexpensive. You get this really nice dark, so like this is red iron oxide in there, and this is a little light colored, lighter colored red iron oxide. And the other option to do is colored. So this is like a green mason stain and a blue mason stain, which look like that and like that. And you can get about this much red iron oxide for the price of one of these. So this is way, way, way less expensive. Um, I mean, the coloring is really cool. Oh. All right, so we have our B clay. And so this B clay from Continental Clay is similar to like B mix from Laguna. And what it is, is it's a white porcelain stoneware mix. It's actually really, really fun to throw with. So I'm just gonna wedge this up a little bit. Okay, so usually what I'll do is kind of spread it out like that, and then we'll just take red iron oxide and pour it on there. Like that. And I am super, like I said before, I really don't measure it out. I'm super inexact, which probably isn't the best way to do it, but this will give you an idea. So then I'm just gonna fold it in on itself and we're just gonna wedge this thing like crazy until it becomes a nice brown color. We got, here's the first one. So you can see the difference in color, right? Between this and this. So now we could just do this and this. But what I like to do is I like to have different shades. So if you have like a dark shade and then a medium shade and then you do straight white, then the contrast with that is more than if you just do like two different colors. So basically what we'll do now is we'll just sprinkle a little bit of red iron oxide on this one, so not as much as we did for this one. Ooh. 
Okay, so now we have our we have our darkest piece right here, right? That's our darkest clay that we colored with this red iron oxide. And everything you could do the same with the mason stains, like the blue and green and red mason stain that I have and orange and whatever you want. You can treat it the same as this. I just like to use this because it's so cheap. It's like 25 bucks for this much. And this has lasted me like a year. And I think it looks really good too. Like the brown, it's really natural looking. Darkest piece, next darkest shade. And then we have our straight white. So now we're gonna prep the balls to throw. And so I'm, we're gonna throw mugs. And so then we'll put straight B clay handles on them tomorrow. This is a, uh, a really good workout, good upper body workout this project is. Cause you gotta wedge like probably at least 50 times on these ones. So now what we do is we're going to layer the different colors of clay. So for example, I'll take a little bit of white. And since the white's easy to make, I tend to use the white a lot. So we'll take the white and then we'll put the next shade and then I'll put another white in between there. And then I'll put the darkest clay and then I'll put another white, a little under a pound. We'll put it that there. So there you go. So then that is what is your base for the marbling. So then how much you wedge this together will depend on how much contrast you want. Like this marbled cup, you can see there's marbling in there, but it's a little bit more blended together. Whereas this one has more of that contrast between the dark and the light. So the difference between these two is how much you wedge this together. So if I go, maybe I'll wedge it twice, like one and then two, right? And then I go like that and this will end up more like this, right? So now if we take two, three, four, five, there's a pound right there and say I wedge this together like 10 times, two, five, then it's gonna be a little bit more like this where it's all blended together and there's less difference between the light and the dark. So personally, I like this one a lot better than this one. If you wanted to have even more shades, you could do that too. Like three is a really simple way to start, but you could have white and then you could take some of this, you could take half of this and wedge it together with more white clay. You could take half of this and wedge it together with more, or you can take half of this and put more, more red iron oxide in it to have an even darker color. Yeah, there's really a lot of options. So we're just gonna get this clay ready, and then we're gonna hop on the wheel and I'll show you how to do it on the wheel. Key tools for this project, a metal rib. This is absolutely essential. So basically we got our clay prepped, which is the hard part of this project. And now we have 12 balls ready to throw. They're all about a pound. And so I'm gonna throw the first one and I'll talk through it. And then I'll just show you some sweet B-roll clips of the rest of them. So the magic part of this project is really at the end. When you're done throwing your form, then there's a layer of slip, which is just liquefied clay all along the edge. And so you take your metal rib and you scrape that off and that's when you reveal the marbling. And keep in mind that the marbling is actually not at its most colorful until it's totally finished, fired to cone six or cone 10 or whatever you're firing to. You guys ready for this? You ready for this? I'm so excited to share this with you. It's been so, I've been talking about doing this video for so long. Don't worry, we'll get a close up view. Okay, so make sure that the bat's not too wet clay's not too wet, boom! And then, you know, normally I would teach you to kind of cone up and cone down. And you, when you do that, you do kind of wedge it a little bit so you can you can get the marbling a little bit less contrasty. So center the clay just like you normally would. So this one I'm just gonna throw a pretty straight form just for the first one and then I'll do a different couple different variations of different forms. And then we're going to pull up. Make sure that sponge clay, whatever you're using is nice and wet. I always compress that lip every time. You can kind of start to see it a little bit, right? The marbling. Okay, I think I'm gonna do one more pull. So now, you can take a sponge or whatever, 
kind of smooth it out as much as possible. Get as much water off as you can. Now this is where the magic happens. I think we should zoom in for this. You guys should see how much clay I have all over my camera and all my camera gear. It's kind of disgraceful. So now we take our metal rib and we just scrape that outside slip off and reveal the marbling. Isn't that cool? So you can see the white and then the darkest and then the middle layer. And like I said, the finished firing will even increase those colors even more. So then I'll wipe the slip off that rib, wipe that clean, and then do another one just to make sure it's nice and smooth. Like that. And then I'll take my sweet little bottom trim tool that I love to use that I got from Old Forge Creations. If you wanna look them up, it's at Old Forge Creations on Instagram. That is the first of 12. That's a good one, I like that one. And this is a really fun technique because everyone's a little different. You can't really control. I mean, there are probably people that can't control it, like people that do this technique all the time. Friends, there it is. That is how to do the marbling technique. So there's so many different things you guys can do with this, like the colored stuff. Um, carving out is really, really cool because when you carve, you're, you're, you reveal the different layers that are inside the clay. So I'll probably save that for a future video. But basically we're gonna let these dry today and then we'll come back tomorrow and put handles on them. And the handles are Pretty simple. Um, I'm just gonna use the white clay, the bee clay, and just extrude it and then put a handle on like I normally would. So anyway, this is one of my favorite techniques. It's proven to be a very good seller and it's not, it's not like all that difficult. I mean, besides the preparation of the clay that takes a little while. Drop me a comment in the comments if you have any questions or if you have a way that you do it. Uh, there's another YouTuber, his name is Ceramic Jim. Um, he does some amazing agate wear and knows way more about it than me. This is like 
I'm like a kindergartner compared to him. So you can check out his YouTube channel if you want to find out any more about agate wear, which is kind of this marveling. I just call it marveling because that's what I do. Basically, I'm just, this is like trial and error for me. Thank you guys so much for joining me in the studio today. Thanks to all the subscribers. Thanks to everyone on Patreon who supports us over there. We're sending pots out every month to the patrons and they get first pick on whenever we do sales online. So if you wanna be a part of that, all the links are below. I think that's it. I think that's all I have to say about this video. Let me know what you think. Subscribe, like, comment, all the things. We'll see you guys in the next video.